Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions is a 2010 video game developed by Beanox and published by what people seem to largely consider the Soviet Union of video game publishers, Activision. Shattered Dimension falls into the odd legacy at the end of the noughties where Activision remembered they had the license to the most popular white man outside of Jesus Christ and contracted a development studio known for their work on the award-winning video games such as B-Movie and Monsters vs. Aliens to make three Spider-Man games in just three years. Rushed development cycles leading to poor products and overworked employees have been the subject of more gaming retrospective videos than there are molecules of caffeine in your average can of gamer fuel. So don't worry, I'm not going to wax lyrical for workers' rights for about 10 minutes. This is, however, a fact I only found out about after completing Shattered Dimensions, but in retrospect, the signs are all there. It is a game of fun ideas, gameplay and presentation wise, arguably the most stylish Spider-Man game there ever has been. It's got the comic book Saturday morning enthusiasm that the current popular representation of superheroes left behind long ago. We don't have Mickey Rourke, we have disabled slug women in a magician's outfit. We don't have Tony Stark with post-traumatic stress disorder, we have Spider-Man forming giant hammers out of spider anus fabric. We don't have Scarlett Johansson. We don't have Scarlett Johansson. That's what I'm talking about. <clears throat> but, well, we do have the late noughties charm of a Spider-Man game where you play as four different iterations of the patterlessly perturbed Peter Parker, Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions is a game that tries its best to make you hate it. You would say that! Wait, what if he's right? No, it's a trick! It is a beautiful, smart, charismatic woman that once on a date with you will not stop farting and burping and saying all this racist shit. And you're staring at her, looking at her eyes, pleading, please, you're better than this. What's the matter? And she just smiles and goes, say uncle. Say uncle. We're in a TGI Fridays, what the fuck are you talking about? It has controls and gameplay feedback so lost to logic itself, it will actively gaslight you into thinking you've been sipping daddy's funny adult fruit juice again. A gameplay loop fundamentally satisfying, but once so clearly rushed, you will ask yourself how much blood must Spider-Man spill before his fervour for death is satisfied. And an ending so void of consequence that you will wonder if the real villain is the sense of emptiness that's been placed in your chest after nine hours of chasing criminals, the mentally and physically disabled, and a magician in a spacesuit. The ideas woven into the fabric of Shattered Dimensions are fantastic, however showing just how much further Beanox would evolve as a game studio in the years to come. Are you kidding me? How many fucking times is that gonna happen? That's why I hate this game. That's why I can't play this game anymore. But honey, look at the screen. Just fuck off, man. But for now, let's look at the story of Shattered Dimensions, a classic tale of a man who put his sticky white stuff in the wrong place and it got him in just a little bit of bother. The mysterious Marvin Mysterio has broken into a museum to steal the magic iPad of destiny. Spider-Man did not delete his Safari search history and so destroys the piece of child labour electronics in order to keep the truth hidden. Unfortunately for our webbed wonder, the sheer talent of Steve Jobs' marketing or engineering or whatever it is he was actually famous for apart from being a terrible father and dying because he didn't realise cancer was more than just a star sign means that the magical energy released from the iPad has now destabilised the very dimensions themselves. Blind disabled female Spider-Man tells Amazing Spider-Man, Old Spider-Man, Cyberpunk Spider-Man and My Chemical Romance Spider-Man that they need to find the tablet fragments in each of their respective universes. Each Spider-Man has three levels, all of which involve chasing a villain who has gotten a hold of the piece of the magical iPad. Empowered by the currently broken form of Mum's attempt to get the kids to leave her alone for Christmas, said villains have become more powerful than ever and you're going to have to beat them to get it back. Unfortunately, while the general idea of playing in the different Spider-Man universes to save this Dark Souls looking NPC, and by extension, reality itself, sounds really cool, it's only interesting if the story takes advantage of said cool premise. This one does not. Each level follows the same gameplay and story beats, you're chasing a villain with a chunk of the tablet, the level is broken up with a gimmick section, lots of combat, a small boss battle in the middle, and a proper boss battle at the end. 
It was a paper thin premise that was enough to keep my attention just to see the villain of each level. Especially since Spider-Man Noir was a new property the year this game came out, I'd never heard of Spider-Man 2099, and Ultimate Spider-Man was running when I was growing up. This game certainly sold me on the 1930s vision of Peter Parker, however. Hammerhead is, well, he's, he's mostly still just Hammerhead, but he's more sepia toned than usual. The Vulture is pretty much Nosferatu at this point, and Harry Osborn is now a buff guy with a skin condition. The main appeal of this game to me is, stick with me for a second here, is how much more comic booky it is than Marvel's Spider-Man, or really any other MCU property nowadays. Properties that have always had the same beats of decent drama, fairly realistic and less fantastical representations of the characters than their original comic book origins, and passable but fairly dull and usually inoffensive humour. They are homogenous media, you know, they all feel the same. Even if they look different, like WandaVision, after a while you'll see what makes them different unravel and you're back to your quippy Americans and an ending that will inevitably set up for yet the next Marvel property. The premise of four Spider-Man universes smashing together with characters who look as peculiar as this promised, in my mind, a different kind of superhero fun that we're not used to today. But unfortunately, Little Mr... Oh fuck, I need to find out the name of the writer. I didn't find out the name of the writer who wrote Spider-Man... It says in the script, fi find out the name of the writer. Spider-Man, who wrote this fucking stupid game? But unfortunately for us, little Mr. Dan Slott put as little effort into the story of Shattered Dimensions as he might into your average 32-page comic book. In each of the 12 levels you'll play in order to collect the fragments of the broken tablet, there is no overarching plot at all, no narrative of note that connects the levels together apart from get the bits, beat the boys. You could play any level in any order and the story would still be exactly the same. After completing your 8th level, Mysterio shows up to Madam Webb's hideout, which is apparently just a one bedroom studio flat in the middle of Manhattan. He threatens to make the disabled lady even more disabled if Spider-Man doesn't give the pieces of the tablet to him. Spider-Man of course agrees, then you complete the remaining 4 levels. The final level involves giving Mysterio the pieces of the tablet as he turns into a God of War-esque giant because something that makes you grow in a video game automatically makes you a god now. The sheer gravity of Mysterio's now deity-sized arse is ripping apart the very fabric of reality, and so Madam Web brings together the four Spider-Men to defeat the thickest danger the multiverse has ever seen. Noir has a stealthy segment, 2099 has a free-falling segment, Ultimate Spider-Man has an actual boss battle bit, and Amazing Spider-Man finishes off the game by fighting waves of tiny minions for 4 to 5 minutes. Our grand conclusion after spamming the triangle and circle button for 300 seconds is hitting a quick time event, one which puts Mysterio out of his mania and brings his arse down to a mortal level of fat. The Spider-Men then congratulate each other in a rather nonchalant way for men who are interacting with their interdimensional counterparts. They all grope each other in their tight supersuits and swing off into the sunset. If you were wondering if the game was made on a rush dev cycle, the sheer anti-climax of Mysterio's defeat will give you the answer you were looking for. You know, I'm starting to feel bad for covering games in which nothing of any importance happens in the story. Like, I don't know why, it's not my fault, but I just, I want to have something to talk about, you know? I, but I feel like I'm doing you guys dirty, you know? Like I'm ripping away something from you. Like I might as well just cut off this part of the video midway through this scene. Before I dive into the many methods in which this game will excite you with fun mechanics before turning you into a raging gamer stereotype because they are so haphazardly put together, Take note, I emulated this game, and you absolutely should do too. Through the power of emulation on RPCS3, you can unlock the frame rate and play it at 60 FPS. The game will still drop inputs all the time, and some levels have so much happening visually that it's impossible to keep track of even at 60 FPS, but moving the frame rate from 30 to 60 turns this game from oftentimes completely unplayable to just occasionally irritating. A lot like me. Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions has a very snappy control layout, but not good snappy. All four Spider-Men feel like their spinal columns are wired one-to-one -one with the analog sticks of your controller, meaning you feel less like you're controlling a person with weight, and more like you're waving a Spider-Man-shaped laser pointer around the screen. Combine this overly sensitive movement with, in general, a laggy as all fuck video game, I hope you enjoy the masochistic pastime of fun being ripped away from you because even though you're hitting all the right buttons to do the combo you just unlocked, it doesn't goddamn work!
You know, I forget how much I've mentioned this before, but I am an exceptionally anxious person. Um, but I would like to congratulate Beanox on formulating game mechanics to specifically worsen the symptoms of that mental illness of mine. Alongside combos and attacks, dropping inputs, like your triangle and circle area of effect attack, simply not working 40% of the time. And hey, video game, don't think I don't know how to press triangle and circle at the same time? Wait a minute. Watch this, watch this, fucking video game, how dare you? See that? Bam! Fuck you! I got pretty into Tekken at one point. Don't think I don't know how to do a goddamn command grab. Quarter circle, quarter circle. Spider-Man. Or the web strike evade, a move that is required to defeat the most annoying shielded enemies in the game, and simply put, just seems to work whenever it likes. Throughout literal hours of testing, I could not figure out the definitive answer to why Spider-Man no do the flip thing. The game is in general so unresponsive it will actively gaslight you into feeling like you're losing your mind. Yes, I never thought I'd say this sense, but the game's controls can oftentimes be so bad it will inflict upon you emotional and psychological abuse. The combat is notably different from Marvel's Spider-Man, and in my opinion, more interesting. Everybody knows Spider-Man 2018 is basically Marvel's Spider-Batman the video game. It uses much like Spider-Man 2's infinitely praised web-swinging mechanic, the ever-talked-about Batman Arkham combat system, a combat system I think, at this point, is completely overly praised. Don't get me wrong, the combat is great in the Batman games, even the ones people don't like. Like I played Origins last year, and I really enjoyed it. But outside of that, it always falls flat for me. You know, it's been copied by god knows how many people at this point. Sleeping Dogs, Max Payne, and Spider-Man 2018, where it is, um, decent. By the way, I complain a lot about Marvel Spider-Man 2018, produced by Insomniac for PlayStation. In this video, yeah, I like the game. I think it's good. It's like decent, but it's like it's like eight out of ten. It's like I played it once, but there's lots of things that annoy me about it. I think I think it's all right. It's a cool video game. Meh. Yeah. But for me, it feels a little bit too slow for Spider-Man. Both the physical speed at which you punch and fly from enemy to enemy, but also the flow that is taken away when you have to switch between gadgets. It's the best part of that game's take on that particular combat style, but unlike the Arkham games that eventually evolved to the point where you could quickly use gadgets on shortcut keys, you are beholden to the trademark Insomniac weapon wheel every 5 seconds. Shattered Dimension goes for what was becoming decreasingly prevalent at the time, your old school beat em up spectacle fighter type combat. That is old school God of War or Bayonetta, where you press square square triangle several thousand times and it never gets old somehow. Much like how I feel Spider-Man 2018 represents the current decent, but quite tired, Marvel Cinematic Universe style of superhero properties, with its presentation, story and combat, Shattered Dimensions combat has a lot more of that essential kid-friendly comic book spirit to it. You don't make admittedly quite unrealistic, but still believable enough acrobatic flips across intersections to punch yet another working class New Yorker who could somehow only find employment in thuggery. See, this is why we're just goons, because we have stupid discussions like this. No, you create giant cartoon maces and hammers from webs and slam them onto yet another bloke just trying to make a living. You use mysterious dark spider slime to whap people with tentacles, and not all those little Japanese ones who seem to enjoy that sort of thing. As 2099 you have this almost capoeira-like moveset, beyblading your legs through the air to take people's head off with your shiny future shoes. Even as Noir, who's the most vanilla character combat-wise, he mainly just punches people, but the way each attack lingers for a moment on each hit is like you're getting the perfect comic book panel in each strike. It's nowhere near as polished as a Batman or the proverbial dead horse of a Spider-Man game I keep bringing up today, but it's so much more fun in a thematic sense. You know, it doesn't take itself as seriously. You are a man wielding weapons formed of a arachnid silk. It's not really Game of Thrones, you know. Sound like Billy Connolly now. It's not really Game of Thrones, you know. Peter Parker. More like Peter Parker, what a tosser. Whether or not that'll stop you from getting sick of it when the game puts you in rooms of awkward enemy combinations is something else entirely. In a room of a few enemies or one big guy, oh, it's great fun. I think that's one of the reasons that a lot of the boss fights are so decent in this game. There's a lot less to get in the way and distract not you, but the game itself from fucking up. The less objects and people that are on screen at once, the fewer times the game is going to have you attack some person that is not even in the same postcode as you. 
It doesn't matter what direction you point that analogue stick in, sometimes the game just likes the look of a certain handsome boy hanging out in the corner that he'd like you to meet. Oh, or perhaps the most piss-boilingly irritating situation you'll find yourself in is where you're thrown into a massive group of enemies and some of them have shields, in which case the game is just going to roll a dice to see which one you're going to hit next and hopefully it's not a shielded guy because buddy, you're going to bounce right off him like a baby off a windscreen. Well, you never seen a baby bounce off a windscreen? What did you guys do for fun when you were kids? Jesus Christ. <laughs> You guys are so, you guys are a bunch of fucking snowflakes. Don't pretend that you've never seen a baby fucking go bedoying off a like Fiat Punto, please. <laughs> specifically, specifically at Fiat Punto, because the curvature of the windscreen is enough that it, it'll just fly away. He'll be fine, right? If it's like a Range Rover, if it's like perpendicular to the ground, it's just bam. Either that baby's going splat, or you're going straight through the fucking car. You're taking someone's head off like that log from Final Destination Two. Even all that isn't the biggest offender of this game's awkward construction getting in the way of its own best qualities, however. The web swinging is. Now, don't worry, I'm not going to go on a 45 minute rant about how revolutionary the web swinging of 2004's Spider-Man 2, the video game based on the antics of Tobey Maguire is, about how that one single game mechanic cured literally millions of humans of AIDS and destroyed the many vengeful alien races who were coming to destroy human civilization. We all know that, we've heard the stories. I remember vividly walking into my local game with two massive CRTs mounted to the ceiling, each weighing probably about five times my weight at the time. Playing on repeat gameplay footage of Spider-Man 2 dangling insidiously over my head, ready to crush any unsuspecting child in some sort of Final Destination-esque gaming comeuppance. <laughs> I remember buying that game and playing it and loving it, but go back to it today and it's... It's a little bit shit. The whole, ga the whole game isn't shit, but parts of it are a little bit shit. Spider-Man feels about as overly sensitive as his Shattered Dimensions counterparts. And while it is all the rage to talk about how shit hot the web swinging is, it's a little rough by today's standards. I played it a couple of months back for my emulation video and sometimes you feel less like the fantastic Spider-Man swinging through Manhattan and more like Tobey Maguire teabagging his way across the many windscreens of New York. The web swinging of Shattered Dimensions is not like that however, it is more akin to your PS1 Spider-Man where Peter Parker magically attaches his webs to just slightly out of frame ceiling panels. You also have a web sling manoeuvre where you can whip yourself up to gain extra height and a point to point web zip just like 2018 Spider-Man. And when they work... Oh! So much fun! Didn't know I could make that noise. Oh! So much fun! Levels designed around them with the proper amount of space like Amazing Spider-Man's first level, Chasing Craven, are brilliant fun. They glimmer with such fantastic potential of what this game can be and are far, far more interesting to me than any of the web swinging you can do in any open world Spider-Man that we've seen before. And it's because the mechanics and design meld perfectly to fit one another. Swinging in Marvel's Spider-Man feels great. I won't pretend it's suddenly a bad mechanic, but there's nothing to it at this point. You are Spider-Man swinging around New York City for the 10 billionth fucking time in your life. By the way, side note here, can someone make a video game where Spider-Man swings around any other city than fucking New York? Like, sir, like anyone? Didn't they make a movie about that? It was called like Spider-Man Goes to Mars or something. It'd be great to explore the landmarks of the world as the webbed wonder that wasn't the god knows how many times at this point, like the 23rd video game iteration of Spider-Man swinging around the mostly featureless facade of New York. To me, there is no thought or engagement from the player in this. You hold R2 and Spider-Man goes forward. There's nothing really to take into consideration. Navigating in the more well-designed levels of Shattered Dimensions feels like the antithesis of that. Your swings are far smaller in arc to accommodate the relatively small levels, but they have this satisfying momentum and peak in Spider-Man doing these comic book-esque iconic poses. When you use them, it's mostly not just to blast forward mindlessly, but to navigate in an area that requires you to web swing. It feels like you're fitting a square peg in a square hole. It's a very deliberate, mechanical satisfaction that feels lost in the other open world Spider-Man games. The problem is, whether or not any of that web swinging chooses to work or not, it's all up to how many blood sacrifices you happen to make to Satan that day. After 
well, I won't exaggerate too much, maybe like eight minutes of wondering what was wrong with my brain, and I'm sure many other dozens of minutes of footage of me swearing at the game because Spider-Man simply won't do what the fuck I've told him to, I realised the magical, mysterious, do not look at the man behind the curtain logic this game has implemented. Not only does Spider-Man have many zones in which the web swinging will be outright disabled, and is never indicated to the player by the way, there are also vertical cutoffs around the levels which indicate how high you can be before web swinging doesn't work anymore. All of these zones are almost exclusively arbitrarily low, to the point of confusion. This means that many, many times you will hit the R2 button to swing and nothing will happen. You will just continue to fall because you're too high, but if you hold R2, eventually you'll be low enough to where you're able to swing again. Once you know that, it still feels a little bit crappy, but you're at least no longer questioning your own sanity. It's the age-old tale of when it's good, it's quite good, but rather often it just simply doesn't work. It's the God Knows X example of a game that feels unfinished, but has enough interesting ideas for you to feel melancholic that there isn't a proper follow-up to all the ideas that got their debut here. That emptiness comes from when the stars do eventually align. Spider-Man swings where you want him to swing, hits who you want him to hit, and does everything you want him to do, but the game bores you by repeating its decent formula too often and for too long. Each of the 12 levels outside the intro and the outro follow the same pattern of introducing you to a boss, fighting waves of enemies, having a mid-level boss fight, fighting more enemies, exploring the gimmick of that particular Spider-Man, then finally you defeat the boss and get the fragment. But every single one of those levels lasts anywhere from between 30 to 45 minutes, and it's simply not a loop that can stay interesting for that long. And unlike your other mechanically simple third person games like Uncharted, it doesn't have any story beats or character dialogue to break up the monotony that becomes of beating the shit out of Deadpool fanboys. Even though violently assaulting Deadpool fanboys sure sounds like a pastime that would never get old, because Deadpool, Deadpool fucking sucks by the way. Okay, it's part of his shite. Ryan Reynolds, I'm so sick of Ryan Reynolds, man. He has one thing, he's smarmy. He's smarmy as fuck. He's not funny, he's just annoying. It's Ryan Reynolds doing the one thing Ryan Reynolds does, which he goes fucking, eh -huh, and then he says something like sarcastic. Uh, he was good in Buried Alive. We actually had to act that, he was good in that. But I just, I can't stand him. I cannot stand Deadpool. Nolan North plays him in this one, and I like Nolan North, but it's just a f Ryan Reynolds, fuck off, next section of the video. If you haven't noticed by now, I am somewhat outspoken in my opinions, especially when it comes to writing and humour. Now, Peter Parker is known for his somewhat goofy sense of humour, because apparently nothing is more relatable to your average person than having terrible patter. Secondary target acquired. I have visual on Spider-Man. You have a visual on your face? Yeah, that sounded better in my head. Comedy tip number one. By the way, see if you say a shite joke, don't just go, <laughs> that was shite. That doesn't make it any more tolerable. Right? See when I started comedy years ago, people do that thing where like they didn't have any reviews, so on their poster they would get like a one star review and they go like, ah, not funny. And they're like, haha, that's so funny. But every comedian you talk to agrees it's like, that's only funny if you're not a comedian and you're not trying to be funny. Everyone else just looks at it and go, oh, guy's shit. So Peter Parker, <laughs> that's why no one came to your friend's show. But believe me when I say, even my girlfriend, a sweet, wonderful little woman, and a massive fan of Marvel Spider-Man, cannot play that game without going, oh my god, Peter, would you shut the fuck up, every time Peter Parker opens his goddamn mouth. What is up with that glowy stuff on your hands? Are you guys ghosts? I've never fought a ghost before. I mean, I've fought specters, but, you know, technically specters aren't ghosts. Peter Parker, shut the fuck up. You seem upset. Yuri Lowenthal does a fine job of playing the most popular iteration of everybody's favourite current day arachnid person, but I do not envy the bone-twistingly terrible dialogue he often has to read out. Dialogue that has become somewhat of a trademark of Insomniac in the last half decade. In fact, I think I was maybe a little bit too kind in my review of Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart. While mechanically that game is fantastic fun, it is so chock full of pandering dialogue and narrative decisions blander than the body of Christ. There is dialogue that is so, and I hate how overused this word is nowadays, but cringeworthy that even seven year old me would have rolled his eyes so hard that they would have fallen out of my arsehole. I may be different than I was, but you helped me realise I am still Clank. 
<laughs> and why do I bring all of this up? Well, holy shit, Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions is a game in which Spider-Man actually says something funny every now and again. Don't worry, he will still come up with completely indecipherable attempts at humour. I believe it was Goethe who said, he who jealously guards his fears secretly yearns to bring them about. Either him or Irving Forbush. Ah. All four Spider-Men love repeating the phrase, Say uncle! Say uncle! A phrase which I've heard at least three dozen times now, and its meaning yet eludes me. Is it some sort of reference, or a joke, or maybe a genuine plea for his enemies to remind him of his much-beloved Uncle Ben? As no matter how many lives saved, quips delivered, or enemies destroyed, he will never truly be able to bring back the life of the man his neglect led to the demise of. The voice acting of every Spider-Man is absolutely stellar, however. I didn't realise until the end credits that Amazing Spider-Man is voiced by Neil Patrick Harris. I didn't know he was known for voice work, but Gay Spider-Man certainly has my vote. My favourite performance has to be Dan Gilvezan as Spider-Man 2099. Pictured here looking like a man who, in the 80s, would be considered a friendly neighbour, but nowadays would most certainly be considered a danger to the local school children. Dan's vocal cords sound like they are varnished with the golden caramel of the voiceover gods, and has easily my favourite line of the game. Why don't we meet up? Oh, I've heard the view is to die for! Get away on my account. If I'm not there in five minutes, start beating yourself up without me. Every performance in Shattered Dimensions is full of that Saturday morning cartoon enthusiasm that is lost in the current zeitgeist of superhero properties. Yuri Lowenthal is a great voice actor, but he's also got one of those voices you've heard a million times. One of those voices that you know so well that as soon as you hear it, you go, oh yeah, that's Yuri Lontal. It is that signature, light-hearted, joyous comic book style that kept me going with this game, both in terms of the acting, but also the art direction. The extreme poses Spider-Man makes during his combos and at the peak of his swings like he's posing for the camera. All of it encapsulates the, I think the original essence of superheroes, that, that fun. You know, for God's sake, the guy is called Spider-Man. He is an arachnid person, is one of the most universally loathed creatures by humans, and yet he's all about swinging around and having a good time. And not about crawling into your mouth while you sleep, or exploding into thousands of little Peter Parkers when crushed by a broom. Jesus, look at the babies! Even the music. <laughs> Let's complain about Insomniac again. The music is yet another pillar in Insomniac's pantheon of blandness. Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, the Ratchet and Clank tie-in movie game that I wish was a cruel joke I made up and not an actual real thing, and Marvel Spider-Man have a soundtrack in the genre of what I can only describe as Diet Hollywood, all formed of some vague arrangement of horns and strings made to tell someone somewhere that something vaguely heroic or just has just happened. Music you could tell me that was all AI generated and I would believe you in a heartbeat. Music that is so generic that I was convinced they'd use the same composer for each game, and I was wrong. No, they're different somehow. It's just all their fucking music is that shite. And no offence, get well, no offence to you. All your music sounds the fucking same. Music that is so generic that if I was part of an orchestra that had to play it, as soon as I got the sheet music in front of me, I just fill my French horn with chloroform to cut the middleman out. The main theme of Marvel Spider-Man is so dull it makes me depressed every time I fire the game up. Remember what I said about the essential, fun, comic book spirit of Spider-Man? Yeah, like this. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, does whatever a spider can. Shattered Dimensions, unfortunately, does not use the original Spider-Man TV theme, but it does not use the as their own brand superhero movie soundtrack in a can our poor ears have gotten used to over the last decade. It's not wholly unique in and of itself, but the noir levels have a mysterious sound to them. The 2099 levels have an electronic spark every now and again. It focuses much more on that essential fun Spider-Man energy than Marvel Spider-Man focuses on some vague sense of justice, if you know what I mean. Praising this game for its comic book-esque attitude aside, even I have to concede it can fall apart from simply a usability perspective. It was 2010, which means we were in the peak of the sixth generation of consoles' heavy reliance on over-the-top bloom and intense post-processing effects. A reliance that means when you play a level as Spider-Man 2099, in a cityscape full of more multicoloured lights than a PC gaming expo in a gay nightclub, the game simply becomes unplayable. 
there are so many enemies, so much movement, so many lights, that even if Spider-Man is attacking the enemy I want him to, I'll have to finish my seizure first before I can enjoy it. Keep in mind, this is with a resolution bump to 4K, and playing it at 60fps, and even with the technological improvement to my eyesight RPCS3 has granted me, the art direction, most of the time, is simply trying to kill me. Add on top of that the game's frame rate that will be sinking lower than the value of the pound, and the original 30fps 720p presentation this game had on the PS3, I have no idea how you would beat some of these levels on the original consoles. And that's me ignoring all those times where the game, for some reason, goes into slow motion for 30 seconds, or enemies become invisible, or when you punch Carnage so hard he flies through solid matter itself. Nope. Shattered Dimensions is, in a sense, the truest form of comic book Spider-Man, where it's flashy, it's fun, and it doesn't take itself too seriously. But it also suffers from the shortfalls in that it has one neat idea, does not develop it, and before you know it, it's all over without any consequence anyway. As someone who grew up primarily in the noughties, as you can tell from these posters behind me, Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions serves as such a specific time capsule for me. Not only for what superheroes used to be like before the MCU cracked the code, so to speak, but also for that period of game design. The square-square triangle combos, the heavy bloom, the stubborn game design practice of not realising shit controls made the game less fun. I play these games and I instantly recognise, oh, this is peak 2008 game design. My array of YouTube videos up until this point has provided suitable evidence that I am indeed a hashtag patient gamer. Very rarely do I buy a game brand new unless it taps into something in the, the little baby Jordan inside of me, like a new Ratchet and Clank, or God of War, like God of War Ragnarok, that I, I got and I beat, and I really enjoyed it, but the more time passes, the more I realise that I might like the last one better, and I'm not gonna lie, it's stressing the hell out of me. Yes, it will be the next video room. Remember to like and subscribe guys. But the more old games I cover on this channel, the more I wonder if I enjoy them because of just that. The, to me, very noticeable qualities that make a game feel of the late noise. That maybe just most of the perceived quality comes from just that. The idea of 2009 or 2010, when I wasn't concerned about jobs or housing or a fucking war going on. Life was just silly 7 out of 10 PlayStation 3 games. Maybe those qualities aside, it's the essence of that time in these games, where it was still very clear the developers were trying to figure things out. Not yet had genre after genre been imitated and perfected so many times that it feels like developers have just stopped trying. When all third person physical fighters didn't play like an Arkham game, or all FPSs played like a Call of Duty, or every open world game feels like that very neat, new cool game at the time, Assassin's Creed 2. Oh, Assassin's Creed 2 is so cool! Such a cool video game, the year is 2009, what a fucking, what a fucking neat video game, I hope they make another Assassin's Creed 2, I mean look, look, I got the, I got the collector's edition, for, there was a black edition, a white edition, I got a white edition, oh my god, imagine they made another Assassin's Creed 2, and then another one after that, and then they made a sequel that was in America for some reason, it fucking sucked, and what if they just kept on making Assassin's Creed 2, until I was 75 years old, how amazing would that be? And then somewhere a monkey paw went Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions stands against all of that. It has a sense of fun and exploration to it. Where a game like Spider-Man 2018 is polished to a mirror sheen but suffers from the same shortcomings that I've complained about for over a decade now, stuff like boring filler side activities in the same superficial environment, it's a game that as soon as I saw the first trailer I knew what I was getting. I knew it'd be a mostly good open world game and I was very confident on what shortcomings it would have as well. Shattered Dimensions has none of that baggage. Is the absence of expectation a valid way to mark a game? I think in essence that sounds quite silly, but art is of its time, it's not analysed in a vacuum. You know, if Cyberpunk was announced in late 2019 and then came out after 5 months and mostly wasn't broken, <laughs> most people would have enjoyed it. But it wasn't announced in 2019, it was announced in 2012, of course it was never going to live up to 8 years of expectations. And that's the aspect of my own personality I'm learning more about as I cover these games. That whether I realise it or not, expectation is such a large part of the perceived quality of whatever I'll end up playing, that 
the mystery and janky ambition of years old video games carry with it so much joy that no amount of million dollar advertising will sell me on. And that's what this game is to me. Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions gets four sticky white boys and a disabled slug lady. Out of ten. And thus ends the story of Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions. Uh, you know what's funny is I was going back getting some more gameplay, seeing the areas that worked. Oh my god, it's just such a such an awesome game when you swing where you want to swing when you combat works. Oh, it's beautiful. The next game will be God of War Ragnarok, and holy shit, it's been stressing the hell out of me because I enjoyed it all. Great piece of advice. I forgot the game was coming out until four days before it. Had no expectation, didn't watch any trailers, got it. Enjoyed so much of it, but the little niggles, as the adrenaline is worn off now that I finished the game, I think back about the little things and I go, oh wait, no, I don't like that. I don't think that's very good. I don't think they should have changed that. And it's stressing the hell out of me. So hopefully, making a video will unravel all the fucking emotions in my brain and go Pfft. And before I forget, in my last review, I discovered that my sign-off will be finding random inspirational quotes on Pinterest to, to make sure you guys have a good day. So let's see what we've got today. Oh, so thanks for watching, guys. And always remember... Your only limit is your mind and the capabilities of your body and your bank account and your social status and uh, really anyone. So just remember that life is meaningless. <laughs> You're fucked. Thanks for watching, guys.